Welcome to the video for Unit 3, Lesson 7. And during this lesson, we will learn that equivalent ratios have the same unit rates. So any set of equivalent ratios are going to have the same unit rate no matter what. Okay. So for Activity 1, they want to know which one doesn't belong and why. Okay, so you have 5 miles in 15 minutes, 3 minutes per mile, 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour. Okay. There are very good reasons as to why all of these wouldn't exist, okay? Well, you might pick A because it's not a unit rate. Okay. Maybe you'll pick B because that's the only one that has the time first. Maybe you'll pick C because it's the only one that is a unit rate per hour. And maybe you'll choose D because it's the only one that's labeled in kilometers. Okay, this is an example of a question where your answer doesn't necessarily matter, but the reasoning behind your answer. Okay, so explain your reasoning. That's the important part in a question like that. All right, so price of burritos. It says two burritos cost $14. We have a nice little table here that they set up. We're going to complete the table to show the cost of four, five, and ten burritos. Okay. So if we have two burritos for $14, that means that the unit price would be $7. We get that by doing 14 divided by 2. Okay. So four burritos would cost $28, and they would have a unit price of $7 each. Five burritos would cost $35, and they would also have a unit price of $7 each. Ten burritos would cost $70, which also have a unit price of $7 each. If you notice what we're doing in this row here is we're multiplying our number of burritos times 7. So 2 times 7, 4 times 7, 5 times 7, 10 times 7. I guess we can write this in here. And that gives us our total cost. So if we have B, an unknown number of burritos, we could do B times 7. And they would still have a unit price of $7. Basically, any number that we put in this table, if it has a unit price of $7, equivalent ratio. Okay, so what do we notice about the table? They all have the same unit price. Okay, you might notice that it's always $7 times the number of burritos to get your total cost. Those are very important observations. Wow, I'm going off the page here. Let me zoom out. All right. So the next one kind of goes on the next page. It says that Noah bought B burritos and paid C dollars. Lynn bought twice as many burritos and paid twice the cost he did. How much did Lynn pay per burrito? So we have Noah who has B burritos and C costs. So to find their unit price, they divided C divided by B. It's just written in fraction form. Okay, so to find Lynn's unit price, we could do the same thing. We could do 2C divided by 2B, which, if we go ahead and simplify that, would equal C over B. Question 4 is asking us to explain why is 2 times C divided by 2 times B, how can we say that that is equal to C over B? Well, this is an equivalent ratio, so if we simplify by dividing each side by 2. That would get us to C over B. Or we could also say that these two cancel each other out, which lead us to just having C over B. Okay. Don't worry so much about the algebra part. That will not be on your test. Let's try another example that would be similar to what would be on your test. So complete the table and explain your strategy. So in two hours, how many bracelets could you make if you make six bracelets per hour? Six bracelets per hour means you make six in one hour. So in two hours, you would make 12, six times two. In five hours, you would make 30 bracelets, six times five. In seven hours, you would make 42 bracelets, seven times six. I guess we can write these in here. All right, now these are a little backwards. Now we have 66 total bracelets and we made six per hour, so they want to know how many hours we worked. This would be 11 because 66 divided by our unit rate. And 100 divided by six would be 16 and two thirds 
if you did that on a calculator, it might not turn out as friendly. It might equal something like 16.66666. I'm going to write it as a fraction just because that's a little bit neater than the repeating decimal of 666 going on and on and on forever. This little symbol right here just means a repeating decimal means these sixes keep going on and they don't stop. Remember if I'm going too fast, pause, rewind the video, watch it again, okay? So we've got a, another table here talking about burritos again, cost of dollars. So if the burritos are $7 each and we paid $14, that means we bought two burritos. If our total cost was 28, that means we bought four burritos. If we bought five burritos, that would be a total of $35. And 10 burritos would be a cost of $70. Okay. You notice that's the same table from earlier. Yes, they did that on purpose. All right, question three says, compare your results with those in the first table. Do they match and explain why or why not? Well, we did these together, so they should match and go ahead and explain why they match. Okay, they should match because the unit price is the same in both tables. $7 per burrito in the first table we did and that previous one that we just did. All right, next activity. It takes four pounds of apples to make six cups of applesauce. So four and six. At this rate, how much applesauce could you make? Okay, well this is a little bit hard to do without finding our unit rate. So I might add in a column over here that does our unit rate, okay? To find our unit rate, we could do six divided by four, which gives us 1.5. This is our unit rate of applesauce per pound of apple. So this is how much applesauce we can make with one pound of apples. Okay. So now to fill in our table, we can do 7 times 1.5, should give us 10.5. 10 times 1.5 would give us 15. Because remember, our unit price is always the same, going all the way down. And we found our unit price by doing 6 divided by 4, that's our unit rate per pound of apple. So 7 pounds would be 10 and a half cups. 10 pounds would be 15 cups of applesauce. All right, now we have a little, little bit different. Okay. Now we need to find how many pounds of apples we would need to make 9 cups of apples. So now, instead of taking our pounds of apples times our unit rate, we're going to have to take our cups of applesauce and divide it by our unit rate. So 9 divided by 1.5 gives you 6. 20 divided by 1.5 gives you 13 and 1 third, which on a calculator might come out as 13.33333. Okay, I wrote it as a fraction to keep it a little bit neater. So 6 cups of apples or nine cups of applesauce requires six pounds of apples. And 20 cups of applesauce requires 13 and one third pounds. Okay, the biggest thing here is using your unit rate to help you solve other problems. Okay, if you can find your unit rate, remember that you can find anything. That's what makes me the happiest teacher in the world. We're gonna skip the are you ready for more section. And we'll go over our lesson summary. Okay. So, if they have the same rate, it means that all of the ratios in the table are equivalent. That's really important. Okay. We can find the unit price by dividing price by number of pounds. Okay. So here you go. Unit price found by finding dollars per pound. Take your dollars divided by your pounds. Notice that the unit price is always the same. Okay, it's always two dollars and fifty cents in this table. Okay, in this table it's always four tenths. So keep those things in mind. 
we can find dollars per pound, or we could also find another unit rate of pounds per dollar. This works the same way, we just divide in the opposite order, pounds per dollar. So there are always two unit rates. You can find them by dividing your two items just in various orders. Okay, and this is always true. Okay, when two ratios are equivalent, their two unit rates will always be equal. Equivalent ratios always have the same unit rate. Okay, when you are done watching the video, go ahead and show the sub your notes. They'll make sure that you did a good job and give you your homework for tonight.